good morning. Well, unless a group of strangers has showed up at your door telling you that you need to sacrifice one of your family members in order to prevent the apocalypse. In that case, you're probably going to have a rough day. Sorry about that. But luckily, that'll never happen to me. Because I'm single, childless, and you will never catch me at a remote cabin in the woods. I've seen enough scary movies to know better. Stop going to the cabins, guys. That's where the bad things happen. But you will catch me at the movie theater. Last weekend, I went to see Knock at the Cabin, which is M. Night's latest movie based on the 2018 novel Cabin at the End of the World. I knew I was going to see the movie when the trailer first came out online, and I looked up the ending of the novel, but I immediately forgot it. So when I went into this movie, I didn't have any expectations based on the novel ending. So first, for my spoiler-free review. I think this movie was good. I would recommend seeing it. I've seen some people saying it's so great, but it wasn't outstanding for me personally, but at least it wasn't bad like old. Old was horrible and I hated it. It aged me like that beach. I went into that movie a happy 28 year old and I left an angry, bitter 82 year old woman who was going to complain about that movie until I die. But this movie was all right. It didn't really surprise me in any way, which I think is fine. It has an R rating, but I don't remember any like violent or gory scenes like explicitly. So I don't know what that's all about, but I would suggest going to see it. I think it's worth a watch. I did feel like it was predictable based on what I'd seen in the trailers and how the characters were portrayed from the start, but I don't really think it's a bad thing for a story to go where you expect or for you to pick up on how a story is going to end. I think that's fine. All right, time for spoilers. So I knew going into this movie that four strangers were going to show up to a cabin where two dads and their daughter were vacationing and tell them that they need to sacrifice one of their family members in order to stop the apocalypse. From the trailers, we know that they easily make it into the cabin, so I was kind of just bored waiting for that to happen. There's a few early like close-up scenes of like Dave Batista and the little girl playing Wen, and I don't know if it's meant to make you feel claustrophobic, but I just didn't like them. Like, back up. <laughs> get away from me. <laughs> I saw this movie in theaters. I'm going off memory. It might not be perfect, but once they're in and our main couple, Eric and Andrew, have been tied to chairs, the strangers start to introduce themselves. Leonard's a school teacher, Adrian's a line cook, Sabrina is or was a nurse, and Redmond's an asshole. They explain that this family, Eric, Andrew, and Wen, have been chosen to prevent the apocalypse by sacrificing one of their family members, or else the three of them will be left to roam the apocalyptic remains of the world after everyone else has died. The couple's first refusal to make this sacrifice results in the strangers sacrificing Redmond, unleashing the first plague upon the world. But there's a slight hiccup. When Leonard turns on the TV to show the consequences of Redmond's death, the news doesn't immediately show anything catastrophic, and then once it does, Andrew explains it away as the strangers having timed their attack to coincide with already existing extreme weather conditions. But Eric, who is concussed and the more sensitive of the two, is already starting to believe the stranger's story, even though he keeps saying that he's not. And it's like, okay, I know the ending now. I know where this is going to go. I know how this is going to play out, but it's okay. Let's keep watching. A little while later, Andrew realizes that Redmond was the man who had attacked him in a bar some years ago, which makes the whole thing seem like it could be a targeted attack. A theory furthered by Adrian's mention of them meeting on a message board and her questioning whether Redmond had put the idea of the visions into their heads. But Leonard refuses to check Redmond's ID because he is firm in his belief that this choice needs to be made to prevent the apocalypse and whether Redmond was the same man that had attacked Andrew or not is irrelevant to their mission. When the couple is prompted again to make the sacrifice, they say no and Adrian is the next to go. But it's interesting because right before, when she's trying to convince them, she mentions having a son and then she waits until the last second to say his name, but the couple is not convinced. Her death seemingly unleashes a wave of a new virus that's especially fatal to children, but Andrew says that he's been reading about this virus for some time already. So was it her death or is it just another coincidence? After Leonard has moved Adrian's body, Wen creates a distraction so Eric and Andrew can get free from their restraints. Andrew manages to make it to his car to get his gun and uses it to scare off Sabrina instead of just shooting her. So then when he's back in the house and he has the gun aimed at Leonard, Sabrina runs in the back door, but he shoots her before she gets to him and her death causes planes to crash out of the sky. Why was that not the first plague? That's pretty convincing, more convincing than a big wave. Her death causes planes to start falling out of the sky, which Eric believes aligns with what Leonard had said about the skies raining down like glass or something like that. So he sends Wen to go listen to music in her treehouse until one of them comes to get her and spoiler alert, it 
it's not going to be him. Leonard tells the couple that after his death, they'll have little time to make the sacrifice to prevent the end of the world. And he asks them one more time if they're going to make the choice to kill one of their family members, and they say no, so he slits his own throat. The skies get dark, and the couple has a moment where Eric is trying to convince Andrew that he needs to sacrifice him. And Andrew doesn't want to do it. But this is where I get confused, because he says, they hate us referring to all the homophobia he's experienced from the quiet disapproval of his parents to the brutal attack by Redmond in the bar. And Eric says, they're just scared. Huh? Who is scared? The homophobes? Of what? I don't know. I don't know what that means. But Eric says that he's at peace and he imagines when living out her dreams and growing up and Andrew understands that for their daughter to have this life that they want for her, he has to make the sacrifice and he shoots Eric and then he goes to get one from the treehouse. She's really just so cute and innocent. She pulls down her headphones and she's like, did Daddy Eric save everybody? Yes, he did. He did. He's dead, but he saved the world. The skies clear up a bit and the two of them walk down the road to find the truck that the strangers came in and then they drive until they find a diner. They go into the diner and see this news update that shows that everything's calmed down. The apocalypse has been avoided. Wait, hold on. You're telling me that all these people were hanging out in a diner? Planes are falling out of the sky and there's a virus going around and these people are eating in a diner? I know that they didn't know the apocalypse was happening, but when planes start falling out of the sky, I'm going home. Anyway, back in the truck, Andrew turns on the radio and of course it's a song from an earlier flashback where the three of them had been like singing in the car on the way to the cabin. And then he turns it off and then one turns it back on and she looks at her dad and then she turns it off. And then a second later, he finally turns it back on. And I think it's like, okay, they're gonna be okay. Most of this movie took place in the cabin with like a few flashbacks. Andrew's parents meeting Eric, the attack on Andrew in the bar, Eric and Andrew meeting Wen for the first time and having to lie about Andrew being Eric's wife's brother. And then a flashback to the three of them singing in the car. So I feel like this movie was most about Andrew. And so then I don't know what it's trying to say because he spends the whole movie like dismissing what the strangers are telling him and thinking that they're being targeted. But then in the end, the apocalypse was real and they weren't being targeted. So like, was he wrong to think that they were? I don't think so. I don't think that's what it's trying to say. I think it's just like an unfair movie about this couple having to make an unfair choice to save an unfair world or something like that. I don't know. I guess it's also pretty unfair that the strangers were chosen to do this and had to sacrifice themselves to try and convince the couple that this choice was both real and necessary. But they're the ones that showed up with weapons and broke in through the windows, which is one of my biggest fears. So it's a little hard for me to be on their side. I did look up the end of the novel again and spoilers for that. Adrian is the one that actually gets shot by Andrew and then Andrew and Leonard fight over the gun for a little bit, shooting one in the process, but because her death wasn't a choice, it doesn't count to stop the apocalypse. And then Sabrina abandons their mission, kills Leonard and herself, and then Andrew and Eric drive off with their daughter's body in the car. And I don't know about the rest of the novel if it's clear if the apocalypse was real or not. The movie makes it clear that the apocalypse is real. I don't know about the novel. I didn't read it. Sorry. I do have to wonder though if in the movie the apocalypse was actually avoided because if all these planes are falling out of the sky around the world are countries not going to start pointing fingers at each other calling terrorism and threatening nuclear war i mean a lot of planes fell out of the sky all over the world so would that not prompt world war three probably this global terrorist attack as far as anyone knows just a thought <laughs> And now this may be super controversial, but I think I wouldn't have minded if the movie ended with Andrew and Wen driving away from the cabin. No diner scene showing that the apocalypse had for sure been avoided. I think just cut to credits. I think people would have been so mad and it would have been great. But what do you think? Did you like the movie? Which ending do you like most? The movie ending, the novel ending, or my evil cut to credits ending? Let me know what you're thinking in the comments. Be sure to like and subscribe. Please and thank you. Bye.